We're recording now. <laughs> so my name is Carmen Bolt. I'm the oral historian at William & Mary. It's currently around 3 p.m. on June 29th, 2017. I'm sitting, sitting with Sally Adams McBride at her home in Chicago. Could you start by telling me the date and place of your birth? August 6, 1928. Uh, that's all? August 6, 1928. And where were you born? In South Boston, Virginia. Oh, great. I was born in hospital. Southern. You were where? Born in Southern Virginia yeah. also. And you were staying in the hospital? Yes, I was in the hospital. Um, and uh, that, I think, well, we, there was a hospital in Halifax too. It's in Halifax County. But uh, my doctor was in South Boston. And actually, my husband was in the Army. So I'd come home to Virginia to have Marjorie. So. Great. Well, can you tell me a little bit about your family, parents, and any siblings you had? My, um, my dad's father had um, bought land, I think, when it was easy to buy large sections of land. And over the years, he would kind of give different children or relatives or sell it to different people. So, but he had a nice house and uh, a pretty good area of land. But this, where we were in Halifax County, is the tobacco country. And at that time, it was, it was the crop of the county. And, uh, and they, uh, you could have a family and send them to school and support them with a small area of land because tobacco was so, you, you, it brought in a lot of income and it was something that most of the family could handle it. You know, they could pass hand leaves and all of that stuff. So, um, <laughs> Robert, I knew senior. <laughs> uh, I better stop talking. Um, so it was, uh, um, well, my, my dad went to um, Virginia Tech or VPI was known as then. And uh, my mother went to Virginia Anima. She, she got a teacher's certificate. And she just went there for one year, and then I think she spent another year at Farmville. Anyhow, she was, they accepted her for teaching. <laughs> but my dad was given, when he graduated, he was given an uh, opportunity to uh, go to uh, Brazil to a, um, a tobacco experiment station. So he was kind of a reserved guy. He seemed to have more fun talking to guys than he did, and he wound up with three girls and no boys. <laughs> but um, he was a redhead, and uh, he, was, he, he didn't get too loud unless it was politics. Sometimes he would get up about that. and. Uh, but we have a wonderful picture of him. He's in a linens, white linen suit with a hat and a tennis racket. And uh, he looks like a million dollars, so it's hard to imagine him handing tobacco leaves at home and <laughs> looking so sharp there. Anyhow, that's what he did in my mother taught school. Great. And when did you first think about going to college? You said both of your parents went to different schools. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, well, I just, it was ingrained in me. I thought, I never thought I wouldn't go to college. My older sister went, she wanted to go to New York to Traphagen, and my dad thought she was not ready for that. <laughs> she was probably 17 too, like we all were when we graduated from that high school. Anyhow, she was interested in art, and so she didn't, she, she went to one of the state schools in Fredericksburg, I think. And, uh, and then she came back to Richmond and went to, a, um, I think it was a William & Mary Connection at that time. There was a business and an art school in mm -hmm. Richmond. So she went there and she had a hard time with math. I think she took math a number of times. <laughs> you know, I think she got past math, but when she got to geometry and that stuff. And I don't know why, I guess because of the design and all, she needed to know when she wound up being a bookkeeper. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. 
And then my younger sister, gosh, you remember where she went? She went to North Carolina. It's a small school, but now it's a, it has a college degree. Mm -hmm. um, it's not too far from from Halifax County, Virginia. We're we're like three miles from the Carolina line sure. there. You don't remember? I can't it remember. Wasn't East Carolina? No, it think? was not even a. It didn't have a Carolina name in it. Mm -hmm. I can't. She won't, she won't be happy if she hears this and knows I don't. <laughs> but it has developed a lot since she was there, so it's m more highly uh, regarded now than it was probably when she went there. Mm -hmm. And I was in a class at Turbyville, a class of 16, and I was the valedictorian. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, that's not too bad to be the valedictorian in a class of 16. <laughs> Anyhow, that was hard for me when I got to Williamsburg because I, you know, I, I did my homework, but I don't remember doing any, t bringing any work home to do. So I guess I was just, I was doing what they wanted me to do. But when I got to William and Mary, I saw that you got to do a lot more than that. And I can remember studying for a Spanish uh, exam. I went up to the uh, football field and sat in, and, and I tried to study, but I could just feel it. I would get this and then it would just sort of drift out of my head. <laughs> so so I, I think I wound up at William Mary with a B plus, a B, uh, that was my, what is the word? Average. Average. And I was grateful that I got it. <laughs> so, but I, it was just, um, um, and I was, you know, I had a year less than a, a school than the kids in New Jersey and New York, which were at a big attendance at that time. They had all had an extra year, and they probably went to kindergarten too, which I didn't do, so I was missing a couple of years. But I did have some really good teachers, you know, among the group. There were some that, that taught my mother and father. In fact, that the, the seventh grade teacher had taught both of them and uh, one day she said um, get out your history books so we got the history books up and then she kind of looked around for a while and then she said get out your history books and when she did it the third time we got kind of nervous <laughs> about it and then she went outside the room she must have known she, something was happening to her she came back, she was fine. But then she went home, she never came back again. And I think her husband realized that something was happening. And she went to, a, he, he put her in a retirement home, mm -hmm. which is kind of sad, but you know, I, I, at that stage of game, I'm not sure I knew what to do. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, that was an adventure <laughs> that was hard. And the lady that taught me math and um, Latin she was very sharp, and she lived quite a long time afterwards. Mm -hmm. And they probably were the same age, you know, in the area of the same age. Okay, what else do you want? <laughs> <laughs> One of that's good that helps me understand your education before going to William and Mary. Yeah. And how did you decide to go to William and Mary? Well, I just, uh, if you live in Virginia, you visit Williamsburg a lot. You know, your your guests come, and you you say, oh, well, you should you need you should know how the state started and all of that business. So I just was used to that and, and I was telling the other girl that I, I did consider Randolph making it one time, but then when I found out they, you had to have four years of Latin, I decided I really didn't need to do that. And then when I realized that they were not co-ed, or when I went to William & Mary, I think I went there with a class, you know, uh, grade school class or seventh grade maybe, and uh, and I really liked it then. Everybody was nice to us and showed us around. So I guess that's when it hit my mind. So and I kind of never looked back except for that time at Randolph Macon. Sure. So I'm glad I went to William Mary. Well, what did you choose to study? Well, I. I was majoring in Spanish, mm -hmm. and the reason I did that was that 
and when I was in the seventh grade, I think I read this article about um, um, stewardesses, and I have a feeling it must have been about Pan American. It was about flying uh, out of the country, and that sounded really good to me. So I decided, and and they required at that time they required that you speak, you speak one foreign language, and you are able to read another, a second one. So that's why I chose Spanish. <laughs> and uh, and then when we were seniors. I don't know who brought this information down, but Pan American was interviewing people in Richmond. And so they arranged a ride for three of us to go to Richmond to be interviewed. And I looked for the picture, I couldn't find it. But we were all dressed up, you know, we had on heels and we had gloves on and we probably hadn't had that many gloves. Well, we were dressing up more at that stage of the game. Anyhow, we were interviewed and we, uh, the three of us got jobs. So, but. Uh, one of the girls, it, well, in the first place, they gave us a job right away. We, we were accepted. And then they said the class would come mid-summer. And uh, then about three weeks before the class was to start, we got a, a, a wire saying the class had been discontinued. Uh, it had been put off indefinitely, which was something you'd weep. And I was out visiting my husband to be, <laughs> and uh, so I was kind of a sad deal. But I held on to it, and uh, the other girls took other jobs. But in at the end of summer, they called us, called me back, and so I went down to Miami and got checked out. And I was uh, it was a really cute. Um, blonde girl who was with um, oh, another airline, I can't think of it, National. And they had a reputation for all being really good looking. And she was blonde, and her name was Sally Allen. And my name was Sally Adams. So we went to get a health checkups, you know, get all the shots that you have to have for foreign travel. And uh, so Sally, Alan was saying to me, "Oh, I'm so scared. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. I, I, I hate this." And I said, "Oh, Sally, it's just a prick. It's not that big a deal." So then I got my prick and I fainted, and they put me on, <laughs> they put me on a, on a, what do you call? Them? Like an IV? No, they put me on this, the, a cot. Uh, a gurney, put me on a gurney and rolled me right in front of the rest of the class. <laughs> and Sally Allen said, I could kill you. <laughs> so I didn't make a big impression on that. But anyhow, that's the, and I did get the job. So, so it was pretty good. Within three, three months, I had a job. And, and I was uh, uh, attached to the Latin American division, which meant that I was on that side of the. And Pan American never flew in the U.S. They, they picked up passengers in the U.S., but they never flew, and that was probably how they got their license. So we flew all the way down the south side, the east side of South America, to all the top, the uh, top highlands, and then down to Brazil and Argentina. And uh, the, you know they didn't fly every day, so there were lots of times when we would have two overnights. So that you really got to see the country, and the the uh, uh, pilots were all older because they're just out of the army, <laughs> and they, Lord knows how long some of them had been in there. But it was funny, you know. You always think that's really romantic, this this pilots and the stewardesses. Well, it was such a difference in age as it, it was not that way at all. But. I think they felt a certain responsibility to us. So the first night we were, when we were going to stay two nights, the first night we were there, they would always say, "Why don't you come and go with us to dinner, and then you can, you know, operate on your own after that if you want to." So they were very nice to us. And you know, if you go into Rio and you don't know where you're going, <laughs> no telling where you'll wind up. But anyhow, and Argentina was, it was very civilized and. 
And the smaller cities were too, except we had one uh, elevator operator who needed a bath very badly. So <laughs> he was in a uniform that I think he'd worn for a long time, so you just kind of hold your breath until you got up to your floor. <laughs> Okay, and I'm talking too much about myself. What else do you want to know about William and Mary? Well, you're not talking too much about yourself <laughs> since this is all about you anyway, <laughs> but we will circle back to talk about your work, but we can um, start with some questions about William and Mary. So do you remember, you said you traveled there as a student before going to college, so you had already seen it, but do you have any very first memories of going to William and Mary for college? I just remember them taking us around the campus and showing us the Wren building and the, uh, what is that low thing that you walk Sunken walking? Garden. Sunken Gardens. And, uh, and then uh, this is really put you in place, but I, I thought it was very healthy. Uh, the, the dorms were all women's or men's dorms. They were not mixed up. And it was long after I left that they let let them share. And I just heard a couple of guys talking about the kind of sharing they did, and <laughs> I was glad I wasn't involved in that. And then Monday night we couldn't have dates, and um, and then the in that picture on the the guys would always hang out at the in front of the Wren building on that spot and whistle at you when you pass it, hopefully. <laughs> but we used to go to the um, post office there. We'd walk down there, and then the post office was kind of past the church, and then you walked back in there, and, and that was the post office, and that's where we went. And we got mail twice a day. Can you believe that? <laughs> so um, we were all so eager to get mail that we'd go down, we'd walk down there. So it was a, it's a different pace. And what else? Well, we we didn't we had a good football team for about four years when all those guys came back, and then we kind of faded after that. And we haven't been too good. I think they stopped paying the guys anything to, but they may be back doing that again. I don't know. But you know, most colleges either pay off for all their teaching or they give them a, and they deserve it actually I think because that's hard work getting all that training done but anyhow it, I think it was being done before the war to some extent probably uh, paying for their education and stuff but anyhow when they came back we really had a good football team but uh, Lou Hoitzman uh, a lot of big names, and and his wife, his widow, is still on, is in one of the retirement homes in Williamsburg. So I told Robert that it's a good place to go because, and I couldn't believe when we took Shannon down there that housing was less than it is, like in Park Ridge where we lived for a long time, I, because I thought there's so many service people who retire down there. I would think that would fill it up, and then there are all the William and Mary alums that want to come back. So uh, I think you're very lucky that it hasn't gone crazy on you. <laughs> so I don't know what else. Uh, I'm trying to think what, what. Uh, oh, I I tell you who's who was really interesting to me. Uh, I I just had one class with. Theodoraldis. Have you heard about Theodoraldis? They were brothers and they came from Spain and they were so funny. And the one that I had was more down to earth. But the other one, he would go through the cafeteria line and he would eat as he went along. By the time he got to the end, he didn't have anything in his tray. <laughs> I don't think he, I don't know whether he was a compulsive eater or it made it cheaper when he got to the end. <laughs> Maybe so, both. <laughs> yeah. So they were really interesting. And, uh, and he, he, taught, he taught me French, too. Um, 
and I thought he was good. And then I had to take a, because I didn't want to take any more Latin, I had to take another ancient language. And this guy, it was Greek that I took, but it was old Greek, not, and, uh, and the guy was really nice, but I should have known when I saw all the football players there that, <laughs> that he was good for them. And he was easy and he was fun. It, it made it really interesting. I'm not sure that I learned Greek too well, but, <laughs> but he, was, he was nice and those football players hurried into his class. I mean, you know, a lot of people don't like ancient languages anyhow, so I'm sure for most of them it was hard. And for me it was pretty hard too. <laughs> but he made it easier. So, I'm trying to think. Anybody else? We had a pretty we had a pretty stiff English teacher. I can't remember his name, but he didn't play around with you very much. He, and then there were a couple of classes that were in. They were big classes. It, it must have been. Uh, it must have been classes that had uh, studios and. The the the, the um, uh, lecture would be in a big hall, and then you'd go to another place to do the active. What is the word I want for us? If you're in in a science class, would you go to a lab? Lab, a lot of lab time. So, but I, I maybe that's why I got a B. I can't remember all the <laughs> things I. Should have learned. Maybe you should wipe that out. <laughs> well, did you have? It sounds like you had a range of professors. Some that were more difficult. Some that were yeah. easier. Did you have any that you looked to as just like a mentor, someone who was influential in your time at William and Mary? Not really. No. I remember the dean of women. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really. Well, I did. And once I had. A conference with her because the guy who wound up being my husband uh, decided he would like to come to William and Mary. So I talked to her about that. He said, "She said we can we can transfer him if he if he really wants to do that." So that was nice that she did that. He decided he didn't want to do that. So, <laughs> but uh, so but the neat thing about Dean Lambert, I think her name was, and uh, she was very short, and sh she had a lot of dignity, but when she sat up on that podium, her feet didn't quite touch the ground, you know, so it was hard for you to be really tough if your feet don't touch the ground. It was um, Grace Landrum, is that? Yeah. It was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Grace Landrum, Dean of Women. I'm trying to envision her feet time, not yeah. touching her, the ground yeah. now, but you said she had a lot of dignity, though. Yeah, all right, yeah. <laughs> so you wouldn't have messed around with her, but when I went to approach her about this, she was very nice about it. So. Yeah, it sounds like it. So do you have any absolutely favorite memories you look back on? Graduation. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Uh, no, I was, I was ready to. I was ready to end it, and I wasn't. I, I never intended to go back for a higher degree or anything. But I love being there, and I've, I've come back for homecomings many times. I, in the last few years, not so much, but uh, early on. And then there were still a lot of my friends were there, and some of them were living there. And so I've, I've just loved, and when Robert and Amanda talked about buying there, I thought, I can't think of a better place to be, you know? So yeah. I was very happy that they were there. Now they he's brought another brother down, so. It's like everybody's slowly yeah, but right. surely moving out there. But that happened to me in, the, in here, you know, generally parents, go to where their children are. But I came down here to see if I would like to live in the city, which I had never really done before. 
So I bought a little apartment down in that direction near the park, and, uh, and I liked it. And then this place opened up, and I looked at it, and I thought, you know, if I buy into here, then the kids are never going to have to worry about me, which is my present to you. <laughs> And although I call on your mother every now and then. So anyhow, that's, I can't remember what you started, what was the question you started with? Just favorite memories. Um, and then you were talking about how you returned to Williamsburg and yeah. you really mm -hmm. enjoyed it and liked yeah. the place. That's true. So, um, no, I don't. You know, the other thing is I think my memory is slipping away. I have all these stacks of notebooks about travels I've taken, and I'm sure, ooh, where was this, well, you know? <laughs> so I'm not as good at memory as I would like to be. And some people are really good. They're people that I, that are my age, that their memory is better than mine. Well, you never know what question we have that might jog that memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of things did you do for fun? You mentioned the football team was yeah. really good. And uh, I almost always was lucky enough to have a date for proms and that kind of thing. And I like to dance. Um, wasn't the greatest dancer going, but <laughs> I like that. I like music. And, uh, and I enjoyed working. Um, you know, that it was a break from studying. And uh, the guy at the theater was very nice and to me. And, um, what else? I liked, I liked the friendship. I, I had no really idea about sororities when I went there. I, I had one cousin who was a um, tried out, and she really was, she was a leader on the campus. She's like four years older than I was, so she had graduated. But she did come down for the night when you pledge, you know, and already I had decided that I was going to pledge by five, and but I felt so guilty about it. So when you, you have to decide how many houses you're going to visit that night, and at that time it was three, and uh, but, but I signed up for the Tridelt one because I knew she was coming down, and I I just felt like I should tell her that I wasn't going to pledge Tridelt. So we kind of moved off to. A, corner and so I said, you know, I really have enjoyed being in the Tri Delta house, but I really like the Pie Fives. And she was she was good about it, so Oh good. So we didn't have a problem. <laughs> but the other thing about our, our, our class, Pie Fi class was that uh, you know, I don't know whether they still do that or not, but they alphabetized us. So we had all these A's and we had, I think our class, it was a large class for Pi Phi. I think it was beginning to slip a little, and, and all of a sudden they got this good class. And uh, I think at least six of the 14 pledges were, their last name was started with A. So we had all made <laughs> friends. And one of them's uh, sister had been a Pi Phi that might have influenced a little but she wasn't allowed to lean on us very much. So so that's how I got to be a Pi Phi. Do you have any fond memories looking back of your time as a Pi Phi? Any events or um, just hanging out with your sorority sisters? Well, I like that part of it. And I, I mean, it was, it was fun and it was, you know, the guys would come for dates to pick you up in the, the living room in the front. And, and uh, some of the girls got up and fixed coffee and but I didn't I always went to the <laughs> went to the restaurant and uh, do they still have that restaurant over on on the uh, what's the main the Duke of not Duke of Gloucester but what's the other Henry it's a house where you go to your house or where we used to go to the uh, apartment house the Foundry. Um, it was a, a restaurant there, a uh, cafeteria there. I don't know whether it's still there or not. 
not there. Okay, well, you lose a few. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe people don't really use the cafeteria as much anymore. I know there was a private uh, dining room that you could, you know, pay to. I think we got a little booklet for the cafeteria with our, uh, you know, the payment for our year. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. My dad spent a thousand dollars each year for my education, <laughs> and that included my room and board. It's a little different now. <laughs> I would say so. I can't believe it. So he invested four thousand dollars in me, and once I needed money, so it's funny, uh, and so I just uh, went over to the bank, and uh, and took one of the bank blanks. I don't think they do that anymore, do they? And uh, wrote a check on my dad's bank for $20. He almost had a stroke. <laughs> and I never even talked to him about it, but I knew other people were writing checks and I needed it desperately. I can't remember what it was for, but so he didn't care for that. I, I didn't do it again. <laughs> but, you know, there was a lot of freedom there. So, but we did have to go down and get our mail from the post office twice a day. Okay, I can't think of, uh, I, w I would go to all the football games and the basketball games. Yeah, basketball was more my kind of thing than football was really. And we had some pretty good basketball teams. So, and I dated, but I, 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 my freshman year I had a, a friend that I dated most, most of the time. He was from Tennessee, and, uh, and he was a football player, but he wasn't much taller than I was. <laughs> but he had a lot of football brains, I think. And uh, so, and then, uh, the next year, I think he had found somebody else, and then I started going out with another guy, and that was pretty good. And then I went to visit George, my future husband, for Christmas. He had invited me out to Illinois to his home. And then that guy never asked me for another date. I don't think he must have found out I was seeing somebody else. Oh, well, I came back with George's Beta Theta Pi pen. That would <laughs> give you an idea that something was going on. So that was kind of the end of my uh, serious, well, none of it was very serious, but, you know, more, more consistent dating and that kind of thing. Sure. So, I don't know. I, I just and how did you meet George? Well, we, uh, <laughs> my dad came to visit one day and he'd come down on the train with some guy, a business friend, and he said, um, you know, he told me his kids go to Yellowstone Park to work in the summer. Uh, he said, would, would you be scared to do that? Well, I was 17 years old. I wasn't going to tell my dad I was scared, to, but I'd never been west of West Virginia, and I was going to have to take the train all the way out to Yellowstone Park and change planes. <laughs> Somewhere up north, somewhere. Anyhow, I said, okay, yeah, I would like to do that. So I, <laughs> I mean, I wrote for an application blank, and uh, they accepted me. And George was already, he already, he had a friend who was a friend of the management. And so he was already there, so that's how I met him. Oh, that's a great story. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he had he had discussed with his his friend who remained his friend for a long time, uh, and and they had seen me and and the other guy said, well, I, you know, I think I'll ask her out, but George decided he'd do it first, so <laughs> he got the first bid in, and so we had a good time. And the Yellowstone was is a lovely place and. This, you know, this walking and horseback riding and 
waiting tables. <laughs> and uh, I can't think, what did George do? I can't think what he did. When he, he went out early with Lauren, and uh, I think they helped clean up the place for, because uh, Yellowstone is not open in the deep of winter. I think it does a little more of that now with sledding and stuff, but at that time it didn't, so they had to clean it up. He must have done some kind of work like that. I can't think what it was. But that's where you met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we didn't, uh, we sort of hit back and forth, and we married like four week, four years later, I guess. Wow. So he went, he came down to Miami to see me when I was flying. And then, uh, I guess, a, then we decided that we really should get married. And it was about when he was going to be, uh, um, he'd have to go in the Army. Mm -hmm. So he stopped college and went to work in his dad's meat packing place. And so when I came down, we had decided that we'd get married in June. I don't know why we selected June. But then when I was down there, suddenly we thought, how do we know you're going to be here in June? I mean, all, all I had to do was call you up and then you had to be there. So we, we came downstairs and his folks always sit at the breakfast table and they talk. And uh, George said, well, we've decided we should get married now. <laughs> My, his dad said, well, the minister lives just down the street <laughs> from us. <laughs> If you, if you want me to call him, I'll call him. I think they thought it was about time we did something about that. So I called my mother and said, could you, could you get together a wedding in a week? <laughs> and she said, well, if you're willing to wear your sister's wedding dress, I probably could. So we set that all up and uh, my, sis, my younger sister was going to be the junior bridesmaid, and then my niece was going to be the bridesmaid. We had a little boy, too. Who was that? It wasn't. I can't remember. Anyhow, um, then George got sick. He had a hard time living that down because <laughs> we had to delay the wedding for a week. No. <laughs> And so he gets a lot of, he got a lot of words about the fact that he got sick about getting married. <laughs> but we were married for 32 years, so mm -hmm. it was a long time. And he died of lung cancer at 52. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so Just. that was kind of hard to take. But we had lived well, so. And it must not have been the wedding that made him sick because no. <laughs> he, he laughed married, and laughed. Yeah. He, he stood up there a week later. Right, he did. But he was a great talker and, and um, a friend of ours, of my parents really, was going to sing for the wedding. And neither one of them came out and we were all, you know, what, what's going on? And they were in the same room together. They were busy talking. <laughs> so somebody had to come out and push him a little bit and say, it's time. <laughs> oh, goodness. But he was a talker, so. which was good because I wasn't. <laughs> Perfect match. Yeah, right. So you had said he was considering transferring to William Mary and decided against that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know whether, I don't know what made him change his mind, so and I d never pinned him down to it. But it would have been traveling a long ways from Illinois to Virginia. And, sure. and, I, and, and he was going to the um, University of Illinois, which probably was cheaper than William and Mary for an out-of-state student. He probably might have had to pay $1,500. <laughs> but uh, anyhow. He did. He eventually graduated. Although he took, uh, he had to take a time out because he didn't wasn't doing too well. He was playing too much bridge, and <laughs> so he 
he went to another state school for a year, and then he came back to Illinois. And he eventually, after we gra after we got out of after he got out of the army, and we had Robert's mother and 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 her brother uh, by that time. So we went back to Illinois um, and lived in GI housing, which was charming, and uh, with the children. So we've been schooling around, but, but then his folks came up for his graduation. And uh, we w went over to get a picture of him. And he's coming out in his clothes, you know. I said, where is your, where is your robe? Oh, I just, I thought while I was there, I just handed in. <laughs> we spent all that time getting you educated. <laughs> uh, oh, so I don't have a picture of him in his. Oh no, that's a shame. But he was done. <laughs> yeah, he was. he's through with it, and I think he was ready. Although he, he was a much better student when we were there when there were hungry children and all that, you know. And then he got a um, he got a job with IBM in Chicago for the summer before he graduated, and then the next year he uh, got a job, a real job with IBM. So that was a good career for him. Great. He did. Good job. I don't think he really knew how those machines worked, but he could sell it. <laughs> That's all that matters. Oh, uh, and and I don't think I'll ever learn how they work. <laughs> I just learn a few things by heart, and and then if I don't use it for a while, it's changed. That's very so it's, true. It's not my favorite part of life, <laughs> but I'm glad my daughter is good at it, and my daughter-in-law and. John is not bad, but he's not as good as the girls are. Let's them keep in touch, though. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And John is a pilot for Southwest Airlines. Oh, okay. And he's about, this is his last year. He's going to be 65, and he'll retiring. retire. Wow. That'll be something to celebrate. Yeah. Anyhow, we, we had thought, you know, when he signed up that he, could, he would retire at 60, but then they changed it. About must have been six years ago, because he stayed on. But by that time, he's thinking the more, the longer he stays, the better his retirement <laughs> deal will be. Yeah. It. So, anyhow, he's doing. He's he's enjoying it, and he 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 really never. He got two years of college, and that was it. And. Uh, I think he just liked flying better. He didn't like sitting in a classroom. And also, it was that time when, when they started opening up dorms to girls. I think he wasn't ready for that kind of sophistication. And so he went and joined his, a friend who was uh, working on oil rigs in New Orleans. But he had learned to fly when he was in high school. So that was always tempting. So then he came back and got his, you know, real license. He got a teaching license, and and then he joined up with one uh, new airline uh, out of Chicago, and then they hit that rugged place and they went bankrupt. And so, but Southwest was just kind of beginning, and American and United, they really would have taken had you'd had to have a college education to get in there, but they took him, uh, they took a lot of guys who did uh, work, were taxi drivers or did stuff like that to make a living, you know, even though they had pilot's license. So I think they were impressed that John wasn't, that he was still working on at something. So that was good. Not John, but... Uh, yeah, John. Okay. Well, something you said um, about co-ed dorms mm -hmm. reminded me just to think back to the time you were there when that was not a thing. No. And you were I mean, it just, just started. Right, right. Oh, when John was there, when right, I was when there. Right, when you were there. No, no. And then I was thinking of the other sort of rules and regulations that were going on at the school at the time you were there. So there were... Um, regulations on how you dressed and your curfew and what the behavior, what appropriate behavior 
yeah. was for women. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, I was really never tempted to do much that was out of the, I mean, I just wasn't comfortable doing that kind of thing. But there were girls that, um, it, they, they felt like they had to do it to go out with the kind of guys they wanted to go out with. So there weren't, I mean, well, I, most of my friends didn't drink. Um, I mean, they'd have a glass of wine at dinner or something, but they didn't go out to a party and chug a lug and get home in bad shape. So uh, it was just not, it still is not a temptation for me. I uh, went down to the island that we go to, and Floyd was has been the bartender there for a long time, and I came over late just to have a drink. And uh, so he was happy to see me, he fixed me a martini. And as I was leaving, one of, the, one of my friends said, would you like me to walk you home, Sally? And I said, well, no, I mean, not, it's not far. Well, why don't I walk you home? So she walked me home. I still didn't, didn't feel anything. But when I got to the bottom of the steps, all of a sudden I thought, now I know why she's walking me home. I think he was being very generous with me, and he loaded that martini with gin, and I, I'm not used to that. So I got in the house, <laughs> and I got in my bed pretty fast. But So I don't, I don't like that not being in charge of myself. That's sure. So none of that going on at William and Mary. Oh, oh it was it was going on, and and you know even girls would come in that had, had too much to drink, but not a lot of them. And not for you. Yeah, and I didn't see much of that in the pie pie house. Sure. So it wasn't it wasn't really a temptation for me. Did you ever break curfew? Yes, I did, and and it was an accident. I <laughs> with a guy that I'd been dating, we were sitting on the side of the uh, dorm, of my dorm, you know, waiting to go in. And all of a sudden, we realized that we had missed curfew. Oh, no. And so we couldn't date for a week or something, you know. So, and both of us felt like we were nuts. We just, we, I mean, I think they used to ring a bell or, or something. Anyhow, we didn't get it, so. Time just passed too quickly. Yeah, right. So I'm thinking of some of the other organizations and activities you were participating in because while you were in um, Pi Phi, you were also a member of the Spanish Club, the WYCA, German Club, and the Student Association. What motivated you to get involved in all of that? I have no idea where, why I was in the German Club unless it was not a language club. No, I believe it was the dancing Dan social oh, right. club. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that sounds that um, more like me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw the German club, but yeah, that's what it was, social kind of thing. Um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a leader in any of those things. And part of it was that I really had to study, mm -hmm. and I also was working. I mean, I wasn't that belabored, but it was still, I mean, I felt responsible. Sure. My People were paying a thousand dollars a year for my. How can people educate their children anymore? Um, so, what about being a part of the student government? I, I, you know, I went to meetings and stuff, but I never. I can't remember that I held an office ever. Nothing. No major issues or anything you can recall happening. Nothing while I you're was going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there was one when well, I just read about it in that write-up that that the. President gay for our graduating mm -hmm. class. Um, I guess it was my senior year. I guess no, I, I didn't. Maybe it was before that. Uh, that um, Eisenhower and what's the Englishman's name? Churchill. Churchill came, and Churchill spoke at a college in Missouri. And there, he made some very complimentary things 
about Russia. Well, people in Virginia are still, he, he didn't say anything nice about Russia. We had just managed to get rid of him, get him out of Europe. And uh, so I've never seen things pinned up on trees on the campus before. And they didn't like what he said about, about Russia. And then we all gathered around the, what's the statue in the middle of, in front of Ren? That's when Bodotat was. Bodotat was there, yeah. And uh, so they were all gathering there and then they were gonna take Eisenhower and, and Churchill in to show him the Ren building and all that. And we're standing there and uh, there's a guy in our class uh, and he, he had a nice voice, he sang. But he was in Eisenhower's office, and Eisenhower looked across and recognized him. That was a really big deal for all of us. But, uh, and uh, Churchill was late showing up. Eisenhower came in the, you know, carriage. But, Eisen but uh, what's his name, oh, was late. He was. He was playing bridge or something, and he couldn't get finished in time. That was a distraction so to bridge. Yeah, he didn't uh, make any more friends <laughs> with the college. He just, and you know, he was a hero until that moment. Why he had to mention that, I don't know. Well, that reminds me, you saying that reminds me that uh, President Harry S. Truman also visited the college in 1948. Do you remember that? I kind of do, but I don't, I don't remember being that close to him. That time I was really right by Eisenhower, so I mean I just happened to be there. Sure. It wasn't that I was outstanding. <laughs> but he's, you know, he was, he is so presentable and uh, so non-intimidating. And Churchill, you know, he, he had kind of a lift to his shoulders. <laughs> uh, he was a real Englishman and and tough, and he he did a, jo a great job in the war, so mm -hmm. you couldn't complain about that. And then he kind of peeled off in England. He didn't get his job back, and you know the next time he had to be voted on it or whatever it was. So, but um, if he was still talking about Russia being so sweet, <laughs> probably why he didn't make it. Uh huh. Anyhow. But you said um, in response to his comments, there were like bulletins nailed to the trees? There were. At hand, William and Mary? Yeah, hand, handwritten things. Do you remember what they said? No, I don't remember, but I'm sure it was critical of <laughs> Russia, <laughs> you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> there's one other thing I wanted to ask you about the things you were involved in. You participated in intramurals, yes? I did for a little bit, not too long. I, I came back and told him, my grandson, who was going to do doing one of the school things at William and Mary, and uh, I t he asked me. I d I really didn't tell him that I played in the murals. I guess maybe I did. I told him what I told him was that I took basketball because I'd played basketball at Turvey Village. Didn't have the best team in town, but uh, anyhow, I told him that I that I played basketball. And uh, so he told the leader that was showing him around, oh yeah, my, my grandmother played basketball at William and Mary. So she gave him a t-shirt that said it had William and Mary on it. Perfect. <laughs> so <laughs> it paid to him to, you know. Worked out for him. <laughs> well, so your coach at, or who was teaching you basketball, it was um, Martha Barksdale, yeah, right? Yeah, right. And uh -huh. she was part of that original class of women right, at William and Mary. Yeah. Right. Do you have any memories of her? No, but I remember her, uh, her, her statue. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was very erect, sure, and, it, and had dark hair, as I recall. Um, and I remember the dean. Uh, I mean, all of them when they got up on that podium, they looked pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, when you were at the school, Pomfret was the president. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have any memories of him specifically? Not, not, well, I just remember, I mean, he floated around, and then we, he 
trying to think. No, I, it was after I left. It was more recently. We had a we had a, a president who, uh, you know, we have presidents that always dressed up to go. A few of them would wear socks that you could see on the podium that were kind of, you know, casual. But this guy came and he was bound and determined to be one of the boys. And so he's slouching all over the campus. And, and then what did he do? That He did something that all of a sudden he disappeared and, and your boss um, took his place. Do you remember who that was? Yeah, that, uh, that what? That Are you talking about the President Nickel? No, this Gene was... Gene Nickel? I don't know that he replaced somebody that had been there for a long time, and he was only there for two years. But then he made some, one of those kind of comments. I can't remember what it was. But it was something. Oh, I know what it was. The the um, uh, Mormon, not Mormons. Uh, the what's the uh, Asian religion that's so popular now, so manifest everywhere. Not, what are they? Buddhism, know, all worried Hinduism, about. Buddhism. Not Buddhist, but the next one. Hinduism, Hindus? Muslim. Muslim. The Muslims ask him to remove the cross in the chapel, and he did it. And that was the end of his career. That was quite the controversy, yes. Um, because there's another room that's just as presentable as they, he, they wanted to move it out of the chapel so that they could have a meeting there. And this, the room that's absent is just as well, I mean, it's not a church, but it has all the trim and wood and oh, the all great of that hall. stuff. Yeah. There's no reason why they couldn't have been there. And I think that was, I don't know, I think he was, I don't know what he was thinking of actually when he agreed to do that. I bet he didn't think it was going to bother people that much. They'd gotten used to his sloppy shoes and college <laughs> outfit. <laughs> but, you know, it, when you look at your boss, he, he has done loads for that college. I mean, it is a whole different place, I think. It's so much more respected in the uh, in just the teaching world. Um, I think we're very lucky, and I hate to see him go. <laughs> but um, and you know, it, it takes you don't always get somebody that good, and you can tell that he it means a lot to him for it to even his letters in the in the magazine are they let you know that he's interested in the whole thing. So that's my comment on him because he is really, I think, a gift to us. And he was the president of the, uh, the law school. And he had applied for that job and the other guy got it. So they came back to him. I think a lot will feel similar to you and be sad to see him go. Uh -huh. So I wanted just a couple more things about your time at William & Mary, if you don't mind. Um, so you started attending, really, following the end of World War II. Exactly. Um, how did you see that play out on campus? Do you remember anything about just um, veterans coming back onto campus or anything that the campus was like as a result of World <laughs> War II? Well, <clears throat> the first place I hadn't been there before, so it sure. was kind of a but. We were in a boys' dorm, mm. and they never even changed the bathroom. It still had all the <laughs> men's wear in it, <laughs> and uh, so that was pretty. It uh, was pretty noticeable. Although I, since I hadn't been before, I wasn't as knocked out about it as some people were. And then <laughs> we we had this. Uh, oh, it's in that book and I, but. There were so few guys in the class, and they were all 
probably 17 year olds maybe that had never been you know they were too young to get called up so um, uh, Tyler did I tell you his name was whose whose grandfather was the president of the college Tyler his name Harrison did Harrison you Tyler uh, he was in our class and he was just probably as young as I was and almost everybody else all the boys were young mm -hmm. so but when you know maybe second semester a few of the guys came back and they were uh, Lou Hoitzma I don't remember his name but uh, he came back and he was a handsome guy and a great football player mm -hmm. and uh, and then he wound up marrying one of my Pi Phi classmates who's, who's in the retirement home in Williamsburg, Audrey, Elaine Howard, Audrey Hoitzman. So they were there, and there were several other, I was trying to think who came back. Um, well, there were a couple of girls who were from Williamsburg. And uh, generally, they lived at home until their senior year, and then they mm -hmm. came over to the Pi Phi house and lived with us. And uh, among the A's was uh, Alan Barr, and she came from Hawaii. Oh. And uh, and then she, she, when she was a junior, I guess she had said she was going to stay out of school for a year. So I said, all right, must have been another one. Somebody volunteered that was supposed to be a senior and be in there, and I was the next in line, and I was a junior, and they were about to let me come to the Pi Pi house as a junior, but she decided to come back, which was good. But the good thing I got out of that was that um, I got a private room. I was in that, I can't think of the name, the, on the other side of the campus as a big, uh, dormitory that kind of goes like this. It's, you go in the center of it and then there are rooms on each end of it. So right in the middle of the thing I had a very nice room and bath by myself. Oh, but, that is nice. And it, you know, I, I, it's not that I don't like people, it's just that if you want to study, it's nice to have a room of your own. Definitely. So, and I needed to study or I wasn't going to make it. Definitely. So before transitioning, um, do you have any difficult memories of your time at William and Mary? Any negative memories? I can't think of anything. No. I guess that's a good thing, right? Yeah, if you don't have any negative so. memories? I'm sure if it was bad, I would have remembered it, even if I don't remember the good ones. <laughs> uh, no, I can't think of any. Okay. Well, we can um, transition to a couple more questions. Kind of after your time at William Mary, you were discussing your time as a stewardess. Um, and I'm just wondering how you've seen your William and Mary education play out in your life. I don't know. My, my folks are pretty good at teaching me fundamentals like be nice and <laughs> don't be a smart aleck and uh, so I, d I didn't have to get that from William and Mary I don't think um, I just enjoyed I enjoyed being with that many people and knowing we were doing the same kind of thing and uh, I can't think. I, I can't think of anything. I mean, we're so wrapped up in politics now. I was trying to think if there was anything in political things, but I don't think we pushed that very much. I don't remember any, you know, party people knowing that oh, they're Republicans or they're Democrats. I sure. don't think that was part of our deal. Um, I think because the boys came back that people were really anxious to get out in the world and and get a you know try to forget that experience they'd been through and and some of the girls had 
You know, I didn't have anybody at that time in the Army, so I wasn't that affected by it except for the whole country. And then I was in the, I mean, you know, we were still living in the country, and my dad raised, and he did this during the war, I guess, to provide milk, but <coughs> they milked the cattle that we had. <coughs> and so I uh, said I would milk one of the cows and sell my milk to give to the veterans. Uh, so that was how I served <laughs> war deal. Sure. But a lot of people did that, and they, they're doing it now, really. So, but I can't. Uh, I don't. I just think I was. I was pretty mature by the time. I mean, I was. I was. I was mature, but I wasn't. I didn't know diddly squat about the whole world. I mean, you know. I was raised in the country, so I didn't. Although my dad had traveled and. So I had that uh, to enrich my experience, and and he would. We had a there was an accident in front of our house. We lived on 58, and uh, my uncle had a general store that had belonged to his dad, and then they had a bungalow on the other side of the store. We had a bungalow, and there was a vacant lot kind of in the middle. And as, as we grew up, and my dad played tennis too, he said, let's put a tennis court in there. So we did that. And then there was an accident in front of our house. And a local black guy uh, got hit and was damaged, but not, you know, he, I don't think he even went to the hospital for it, but he was, and it was gypsies. And so the police came out and they said, well, you know, you'll have to stay here for a while. And here we are in the country with all these gypsies, which made my uncle, who was nervous anyhow, and when they walked into the store, he was like this. <laughs> and my cousin uh, and I were over at the store. We'd play in that store all the time. They had old shoe boxes and we'd play that we were in a car going down there. And so we were in there one day and we watched this little gypsy boy come in. And he went over to one of those um, seed racks and he slipped a couple of packages of seeds in his pocket and then he went out. And on the side was a big tree and kind of bare space. And uh, he went over and hid them under a rock and came back in the house again. So Jane and I went and took them out of the rock, from under the rock, <laughs> while he was busy getting two more. So uh, he came back, and I'm sure he didn't know what had happened to his seed. But what I started to tell you was that my dad went over, and they, had, they put their tent up and everything, and uh, he started talking to them, and I realized he's speaking, he's speaking Portuguese to them. And he hasn't used his Portuguese in 20 years, probably. So he would go out and visit with them. But they made us all pretty, I mean, because they have such able fingers. I don't think they ever got anything from our house, but the, it's sure the store was a temptation for them, you know. And they're just used to that. I mean, I think their, their sense of, of being not good, it's not not very strong. I think they just thought, oh, here's something; it'll be easy to take home, and we need this, or you know. They're an interesting group, and they were there for a week, and then a year or two later, one of the guys came. He was hitchhiking, and he came by the store to see to see us. Sounds like your little town made an impression, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. So, I guess that's it. Yeah. Well, at the very least, your William and Mary education left you with some great friendships, and it gave you your Spanish education that led right. to your career, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, it just uh, was part of growing up, I sure. think. And 
So I'm, I'm very grateful for it. I, I don't think I would have been, oh, I just liked it very well. I, um, my two, my son's two children went to Miami of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And when I was around, and I went over, I went over to visit long after I was at William and Mary. And at that time, it was considered the William and Mary of the Midwest. I called Susan, to, I couldn't think of Miami, crazy. I called Susan and said, now, where was it that the kids went to school? She said, Miami, oh, oh Lord, yeah, I should know that. And I, so I told her, I, I wanted, it might come up that we could say, uh, tell her about Miami of the Midwest. She said, well, oh, she called me back later. She said, you know, I just thought you might be making a mistake because at Miami of Ohio, they say it's Miami of Harvard. Um, that's who they think that Miami was imitating. Well, the campus looks very much like William and Mary. Really? I haven't, I don't know that I've seen Harvard. I don't know what it looks like. But it's almost a carbon copy of the original, you know, the old right. part of it. The, Ren building and all that, so. Mm -hmm. But it's not, uh, it's the Harvard of the Midwest. <laughs> she wasn't very happy with my. <laughs> and they loved, they loved that too. And, and the nice thing about that school is that it's so close to Chicago and it does, it must have a very good business school because there are lots of business people in operation in Chicago and they have that contact with the college, and, and that's how Robert, uh, Sam got his first summer job and his first job out of school. And because they just make contact with those people, and they, you know, it's close enough that, and they have a good reputation. So that's another. And Harvard may have taught him that, but I don't know. <laughs> how long did it take Harvard to get co ed? I would have to look that yeah. up. I'll have to do that later. Yeah. So speaking of coeducation, that's yeah. a great <laughs> segue into my final question for you, which is considering that we're about to kick off this celebration for 100 years yeah. of coeducation at William and Mary, can you tell me what you believe to be the value and the contribution of women? Just generally. <laughs> generally or at the college at the university? College, yeah. Well, at William and Mary, they've always had, I mean, it, since I was there, they've always had jobs in the, you know, in the uh, presidents of the clubs and in uh, the newspaper and the uh, yearbook. So, I don't know, it never, never occurred to me that that was not being done other places. I think they must have gotten into the habit of it. Well, maybe Martha Washington was more aggressive. <laughs> she said that. But because some of those early women, they really did. I mean, they might have not have taken charge of things in front of people. But when they got back home, they had a pretty strong, I think they were used to not having a paid job or anything. But I think the strength in the family was pretty, it, to me, was in Virginia, anyhow, I think it was felt. Although, and my mother would, she didn't, she didn't trouble with dad very much. And he was, he could be grumpy, so. Uh, she might have been a little harder to, but she, he, we were raising cattle once and he was, he was working with Bill Tuck. Do you remember Bill Tuck? He was, Governor of Virginia at one time, and he, he's from Halifax County. He'd come all the way up from being a representative and all that stuff, and, and he hired my dad to be his little secretary guy. Now I'm about to lose my contact. Uh, what were we talking about? We were, well, initially we were talking about just the value and contribution yeah. of women. Mm -hmm. And then you were telling me about how that was just always the case. Yeah, right. When, as far as you can remember. 
Well, I can't remember why I brought <laughs> Bill Tuck up, but. You can always it's, tell it's, me later if you do remember <laughs> it. But, um, but he's, a, he's a pretty big name in a sure. county. Yeah. Because uh, he did, you know, he took, uh, he had almost every uh, office in the state, the House, the Senate, the uh, governor, and then he was just a U.S. Representative too. That would make you memorable yeah, for right. sure. And he looked like um, a politician. Yeah. He had a, one of those big hats and he was a little robust. So, but they're proud of him there. Great. Well, I can't think why I started that conversation, but. It'll come to you in a little yeah. bit, I'm sure. But that was the end of my questions for you. So before I close us out, I just wanted to ask you if there was anything you thought I would ask you that I didn't or anything you'd like to say before we close out the interview? Well, I, I think I didn't really answer you very well about what I thought of women. Sure, you can well, yeah. feel free. <laughs> and I do like women. Uh, and I'm proud of a lot of women that are doing, look at uh, Rob's wife. She's when she changed her major, didn't she? To decide to go into nursing, and uh, and so I think that's impressive. Marjorie has gone back to school. To, she went to nursing too, I guess. Marjorie was in art, and what was what was Amanda doing? What was she studying at in Colorado? What science? No, well she was heavier stuff. <laughs> But um, so I, my experience with them, I, I don't think we have any really flighty, well, maybe, maybe one. <laughs> uh, not me, though. <laughs> um, so I'm just impressed with, and I don't compare them mm -hmm. to men. I, I don't think they necessarily do the same thing, or men are not anxious to do what the women are doing, but every now and then they, and, and they're taking better care of their kids now than they used to. I mean, they'll babysit and do things that I'm not sure dad would know what to do with those. <laughs> so I, I admire women and there's some really outstanding women, I think, and we're getting them in politics too. Sometimes they do well and sometimes they don't. <laughs> I guess that's the case with anybody. Right, and so the, so do the guys as witness. <laughs> so thank you very much. You've, no, thank yeah. you. This has been, it's always so inspiring to sit with anyone and just hear their story. And you help me fill in so many gaps I have when I think about um, the 40s at William & Mary. Yeah. So I really appreciate yeah. you giving us your time. Well, we, we really hit the a tough, uh, and, and we didn't even think it was tough. I mean, we thought it was great that the guys were coming back. The war was over. That was, mm -hmm. the war was a tough part. The sure. Four years before was, and my older sister was five years older than I was, so right. she was, a lot of guys, and she had a big class, a lot of guys went in the Army, and some of them didn't come back. Yeah, that's right. So. Well, thank you again. You're it's very welcome. Great. It's nice to meet you. You as well. Now, did you go 